Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Tabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we've got a pretty interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want today's full show, uh, be sure to check out the Dreamers Pro Podcast. We have that pinned in the comment section. We're on Spotify and iTunes. Anyway, let me get into this, uh, this topic here. Now, as you guys know... Scottie Pippen has been very talkative uh, in the media over the last few years and months now. All of this really started uh, when the Last Dance docuseries came out. From that point forward, he went on the Dan Patrick show and he just started his tirade on Michael Jordan, uh, Phil Jackson, and everybody else that he felt that wasn't on his side. It was on that show where he said, well, he kind of suggested uh, that Phil Jackson uh, was a racist and then... He went on to say that, uh, you know, Michael Jordan was just posing for the cameras. And then in other interviews, he said MJ wasn't really that great. And then in another interview, uh, he said that Michael Jordan's a terrible basketball player. Look at him before he, he didn't start winning anything until he got there. In this case, we're talking about Scottie Pippen. And it was just one thing after the other. One thing after the other. And as he was doing this, it ended up turning off a lot of people. Now, for those of you who know the backstory, what's happening with Scottie and, Mike and the personal stuff. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but it's a very, very messy, sticky situation that we don't want to get into, right? But there's been this narrative that's been floating around there. And it's a narrative that uh, Jordan detractors like to deploy, which is MJ couldn't win a bloody thing without Scottie Pippen. He was nobody before Scottie Pippen even got there, right? That's what a lot of these people like uh, try to make it seem. And essentially, uh, what they were trying to do is basically minimize the greatness of Michael Jordan by basically saying, MJ is not as good as, you know, a lot of you guys try to make him out to be. And if and it had it not been for Scottie Pippen, uh, we wouldn't remember Michael Jordan the way that we remember him now. A few things to say. Number one, Michael Jordan has always given the proper respect to Scottie Pippen. He's always said that there's no way he would win those six championships had Scottie Pippen not been his teammate. We 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 even recently produced a show about uh you know about the way uh Kobe and Jordan um um what is it prop up their teammates and talk about them and Michael Jordan spoke very highly of Scottie Pippen. But these people have tried to use it as this, right? Now, they also forget the fact that MJ came into the league in 1984 and 85 and Mike uh, and Scottie Pippen came into the NBA in 80. What is it? He was drafted in the NBA in 87 and Scottie Pippen made his first all-star team in uh, when did he become an all-star in 1990, right? 1990 is when Scottie Pippen became an all-star. So a few years after uh, he joined the NBA first year. Most people don't mention the fact that Scottie Pippen is a rookie, averaged 7.9 points per game with uh, two assists and 3.8 uh, rebounds. The second year, he averaged 14 points per game, 14.4 points per game, 1.9 steals, 3.5 assists, 6.1 rebounds. His third year is really when he started coming into his own. And the fourth year, which was the 1990-1991 season, essentially when Scottie Pippen developed into an all-star. It was that season, in the regular season, Scottie Pippen averaged 17.8 points per game, 1.1 blocks per game, 2.4 steals, 6.2 assists, 7.3 rebounds, a 70% from the free throw line, 30% from the three, 52% from the from the um from the field playing what 30 pa, 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 playing 36.8 minutes per game and that year in the playoffs Scottie Pippen averaged 21.6 points per game 1.1 blocks 2.5 steals 5.8 assists 8.9 rebounds on 79% free throw shooting and 50% shooting from the th uh, from the field basically all of his numbers went up that year and that was when Michael Jordan was able to start winning championships. We're not even going to get into the fact that when MJ came into the NBA, his first season, he played 82 games, averaged 28 point, points per game, 0.8 point blocks, uh, 0.8 in blocks, 2.4 steals, 5.9 assists, 6.5 rebounds. The year that they actually won their first title, MJ that season actually led the league in scoring, scoring 31 points per game with one, one block per game, 2.7 assists per game, getting you 5.5 rebounds, 6 assists per game, shooting 85% from the free throw line, 37 uh, um, no, 85% for the free throw line, 31% from the three, 54% from the field. And in those playoffs, 
he averaged pretty much the same numbers, 31 points per game, one steals. So basically, the year Scotty caught up to his talent and became a viable uh, second option was the year MJ started winning championships. But this morning, I was doing some research and I came across an audio of Scotty Pippen while he was on ESPN talking to Tracy McGrady, I forgot, and Paul Pierce, where they were talking about late game closers and Scotty Pippen publicly admits that he had zero clutch gene. He never took any clutch shots. And basically in late game scenarios, he was a liability to Michael Jordan. And if it wasn't for the heroics of Jordan, they would have never won those close contests. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Scotty Pippen had to say here. And then we're going to come back and, and, and continue on. Take a listen to what Scotty Pippen had to say there. You know, when you're in those moments, you want the ball because you're confident in your ability. And you don't want to let your teammates down. That's the difference, right? We heard that Kyrie yeah. interview at the beginning of the show where he said, I just stopped listening to everyone Rachel, I'm not afraid to say that I don't have clutch genes. Uh, I played with a guy that took all the clutch genes. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we can't even argue <laughs> with him. <laughs> hey, he got, hey, it's all first. Hey, <laughs> you know, I had the best clutch player ever. Yes. I'm all good with, with <laughs> I mean, is that, is, when you are playing with a guy like that, does it change your mentality in terms of, as these guys say, they say, oh, I want the ball ah. in that moment. When you spend so much of your career playing with Michael Jordan, do you think, okay, in that moment, I know what I'm doing. I'm passing. Yes. You, <laughs> hey, you know what you're doing. But listen, and you know what? It, it, it was a relationship that me and Michael had. Sure. So it was uh, the relationship built that I knew where I wanted the ball at the end of the game. He wasn't, I knew who wanted the ball listen, at the end of the game. I'm a, I was a Pip fan. I watched Pip growing up. He wasn't afraid. Yeah. He had the he had the clutch gene, mm -hmm. and he really wanted it. What was that 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 game in uh, New York when yeah. they went to coach? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's what I said. Somebody <laughs> took my clutch jeans out of me. <laughs> Bring that up, Pip. But no, I Pip had the clutch gene. I mean, he just he played with the, the greatest clutch player of all time. And, right. and by the way, Michael depended on you to do certain yeah, things. And absolutely. there were parts of Michael's game that he ceded to you on that court. As you said, it was a partnership. It was. And you would never see a game where Michael would be standing watching somebody take the last shot. Right. <laughs> that would just kill him. Right. Half the battle is not being afraid to take it. Right. No, absolutely. And that's yeah. the important part, of course. And we will see that develop, too, with LeBron and Kyrie as this goes over time. So you heard the audio. If you listen carefully, you would actually hear Tracy McGrady cracking the joke about the fact of when Phil Jackson didn't drop that last play for him. He drew it up for uh, Jason. Uh, what is it? Tony Kukoc, because he probably didn't have any confidence uh, in Scotty taking that last shot. And they were kind of having a laugh about that. But if you if you saw the video, you could see that Scotty Pippen was visually uncomfortable uh, with the fact that Tracy McGrady brought up that point, right? So it's important that we point that out. Back to this, back to this topic here. You heard Scottie Pippen himself basically say it. You also heard him say that MJ is one of the clutches, if not the clutchest NBA player to ever live. To ever live. If you listen to a lot of the Jordan detractors, they make it seem as if, oh, if it wasn't for Scotty. Jordan would be nothing. Does that sound like somebody? Does that sound like somebody that was on the same playing field as Michael Jordan? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, a number of uh, a number of months ago, we put up a poll on our channel asking our audience this very question, which was it was centered on. Who played the biggest role in the success of the Chicago Bulls? We actually put up this poll, and I wanted to get a sense of what some of our viewers thought. I believe we put Phil Jackson. We put uh, Michael Jordan. We put Scottie Pippen. I'm just trying to find the poll here. I don't know how long ago it was. But basically, in that poll, <laughs> the overwhelming majority... The overwhelming majority voted for Michael Jordan when they asked who played the biggest role in the success of the Chicago Bulls. We had Phil Jackson. We had Scottie Pippen. The overwhelming majority voted for Jordan. 
which means that the people that actually followed that Chicago Bulls run actually know, in fact, that Michael Jordan was the catalyst, the catalyst for the success that that organization experienced. Most people know this. Here it was. We put up this poll three weeks ago and the poll read, who was the biggest factor for the Bulls winning six championships? That poll generated 33,000 votes, a pretty good uh, sample size. Of the 33,000 voters, 85% of them voted for Jordan, 8% voted for Phil Jackson, 7% voted for Scottie Pippen. That's how the numbers played out. Now, another point worth bringing up. Some of Jordan's detractors have also tried to use another point unsuccessfully. And this other tactic they've tried to use was, well, well, Jordan had Phil Jackson. He had Phil. And if he didn't have Phil, there's no way he goes on and wins those six championships. Well, first of all, you know that winning an NBA championship is a collaborative process. You're going to have a good coaching staff. You have to have a good, a good organization that knows how to put a team together. Obviously, you have to have the good, you have to have a good culture. You have to have great players. All of those different things, right? But what these people forget was that when Michael, when uh, Phil Jackson took over the Chicago Bulls, he was actually being promoted from being an assistant head coach. Now he won two rings, I believe, as a basketball player. But that don't really matter because you don't have any coaching experience, really extensive one where you're coaching an NBA team. But the way they try to describe it is like, oh, Jordan had this championship head coach that had, that had already won multiple championships. So therefore, he had something that no one else had. Phil Jackson won his first title as a coach with Michael Jordan. Phil Jackson has 11 championship rings, six with the Bulls five with the Lakers. He doesn't have 13 championship rings. He doesn't have 14. If you guys remember properly, I believe Jordan's original coach, if you go back and watch the last dance docuseries, was Duck Collins. And when Jordan came back to the NBA, when he played with the Washington Wizards, he was reunited with Duck Collins, his first NBA coach. So when people try to say that, these are people that don't have the information. They don't have the information and they're trying to distort the facts. The fact is Phil Jackson hadn't won, hadn't won a bloody thing before he started coaching Michael Jordan. Scottie Pippen hadn't won a damn thing before he started to play with Michael Jordan. It wasn't like I said Scottie Pippen was some finals MVP on some other team. Then he joined MJ. And then he's like, I came to the rescue. No, no. And the clearest way to prove that MJ was the driving force between those two gentlemen was how many championships did Scottie Pippen win when Jordan retired both times? I'll wait. How many championships did he win? How many? You see, when people tried to say Kobe was carried by Shaq. One of the things that drew that drove Kobe was he wanted to prove those people wrong that were saying that he needed Shaquille O'Neal to win. So I believe Kobe Bryant was open to the idea of Shaq being moved out of LA to prove to his doubters that he didn't need Shaq to win a title. Shaq left LA the next season when he joined the Miami Heat, they won the championship. But then Kobe went on to win two championships without Shaq. So who needed who? But in the case of Scottie Pippen, Scottie never won anything without Michael Jordan. So who really needed who? Who needed who? And we're not saying this to say that Scottie Pippen didn't contribute to the success of the Bulls because he absolutely did. The first person to admit this is Jordan himself. The very first person that usually admits this is Jordan. But when it comes to Scotty, all of a sudden he finds it difficult to bestow the same grace and the same credit that MJ gives him 
it's very difficult for him to do it back. There's no reciprocity there. It's only a one-way thing. But there you heard him himself. You go back and look at any of those Chicago Bulls great uh, clutch moments. Where do you see Scottie Pippen in there? And there you have him admitting that in late game scenarios, I was a liability to Jordan. I wasn't even looking for the ball. And two, they were not drawing up any plays for me. Maybe that also plays into some of the jealousy that's taking place today. Why he got to have it? Why can't I have it too? This is the, this is the, this is the, this is the number one killer of joy. Running around comparing yourself to other people. It happens. Have you ever been sitting down with someone? Y'all are eating. Think about this. Y'all are eating. Let's say y'all go to like a buffet. You guys go to the buffet. This guy orders this. He gets his food first. He sits down. He's balanced in the chair. He's eating. Ah, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm happy. You come. You sit down. But on your plate, you have a bunch of things that either he didn't realize was there. But now they're looking at your plate. He's like, man, your plate looks good. And guess what happens? That person that has a full plate of food in front of them, guess what they start doing? They stop paying attention to what they have and they start looking at yours. The food is in front of them, but now all of a sudden they want what you have. It's not enough that they have what they have. They want what you have. What's next? You want the Jordan brand shoes? Hmm? You wanted him, you want to have the Jordan brand? Like, like cut it out. So these are my thoughts on this. The question that I have for you guys is what do you think about Scottie Pippen admitting that MJ was the close on that team? And let me ask you guys, for the people that follow the Chicago Bulls run, who do you think was the number one driving factor for the success of that team? And between Scotty and MJ, if you had to give out a percentage, who would you give the majority of the percentage to in terms of who contributed to those six championships the most? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comment section and we catch you guys on the next show. Peace.